Thank you for joining us this morning. And as always, worship begins as the prelude begins. Ready the way of the Lord, ready the way of the Lord, a voice cries out in the and family, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. Our feet are standing with your gates, O Jerusalem. Peace be within your walls. Let us worship God. And let us join our voices together for our prayer of confession. God of forgiveness and mercy, hear our prayer as we confess our sin. With moments so critical, we let time go by. With deliverance so near, we linger in the darkness. With Christ as our armor, we yet fear the unknown foe. With the night having passed, we still hesitate to greet the new day. O oh God, lead us forth that we may meet the moment you graciously give us. Dispel the shadows so that your will may be clear. Clothed with light and new life in Christ, let us go forth as those awake to your will. who was in a position to condemn. Only Christ in Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Hear and believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Let us pray. Lord, in a season when every heart should be happy and light, many of us are struggling with the heaviness of life. Burdens that steal the joy right out of our stockings. Tragedy arrives as innocent victims suffer, and an inner voice whispers, be afraid. We need your peace, Jesus. We confess that our hearts are too often filled with wonder of a different kind. Wondering when the bills will be paid, when the terror will stop, when rest will come. Will it ever? Is the message still true? In a world where worry, not peace, prevails, stir up that good news again. This Advent, make it real in our hearts. 
Never have we needed your joy and peace more than now. Thank you for the gift of Jesus, our Emmanuel, the Word made flesh. We not only need your peace and joy, Lord, we crave it. You've promised rest for the weary, victory for the battle-scarred, peace for the anxious, and acceptance for the brokenhearted, not just at Advent, but every day of every year. Your name is still called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. We know that peace on earth can only come when hearts find peace with you. You are still our joy. You are still our peace. You are no longer a babe in the manger. You are Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And we still celebrate you as Lord this Christmas season, as always. And we always ask your presence among us with the prayer your son taught us so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, as a light has dawned, you have enlarged the nation, increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. And from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 36 to 44. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. Up to the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with the hand mill, one will be taken and the other left. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious Heaven God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. On this second Sunday of Advent, life and schedules are often filled with chaos and doubt. And today's scriptures recognize reality in our world and in our lives. For thousands of years, God's people have been praying, praying for peace. And yet peace eludes us. For hundreds of years, we have been awaiting the return of Christ. And yet we have been awaiting the return of Christ. And yet we wait again and again and again in this Advent season. We wait for peace. We wait for God. With hope and love, Advent calls us to wait. But let's face it, we don't do that very well. Our lives are filled with the unexpected. The events that took place this past week around our world with all of the violence and upheaval or the, the corona deaths that keep rising and rising and rising. Maybe a church member passed away. Maybe a family or friend passed away. It's very sad events in our lives. We decorated the church this weekend. There was joy in decorating that church, but in the sense, there were still people who passed away. People who lost loved ones, people that are sick. Our lives are filled with unexpected good things as well. Maybe a surprise birthday party or a surprise bonus from your place of work. And wouldn't that be a really nice surprise this time of year? Last year at this time, what was the big thing on the news? Something unexpected? Our lives are filled with unexpected things. The second coming of Christ will be one of those unexpected things, and you won't see it coming. But it will happen. It's on the calendar. We just don't know when. Of all the unexpected things that take place in our world, this one will be the biggest surprise of them all. Now today is the, the second Sunday of Advent, of the Advent season in the church here. And the word Advent means coming or arrival. You see, Jesus is coming. His arrival is just around the corner, and that is what we're going to focus on during the Advent season. The Advent season is four Sundays long, which is why we have the four Advent candles. Each candle is lit as we progress through the Advent season until we reach Christmas, when we celebrate Christ's first arrival as a baby in Bethlehem. The old Monday night football when Hank Williams used to sing uh, their song, Are You Ready for Some Football? It was a huge hit. And I used to listen for that every Monday night for the Monday night football. And it would, I knew that it would be entertaining as soon as I heard that song. Unfortunately, I rarely ever made it to halftime because it's a long day and I was a little tired, so I would always fall asleep and always wake up after the game. So am I ready? Am I ready? I want to be. But the demands of living in the day-to-day -day world overcome my enjoyment of the game sometimes. Today, I want to talk about a different kind of ready. The kind where if you let your demands of the world overcome your preparedness, you don't just miss some enjoyment. You miss out on eternity. Are you ready to meet Jesus? Now, if you really want to drive your family crazy, especially your spouse, call home from somewhere telling the family to get ready for someone is coming to dinner. Then hang up. They don't know who is coming or when, whether it's someone important or maybe a relative, a good friend, or a total stranger. 
There will be high tension until you walk in the door with this person. This morning we lit the first and second candle on the Advent wreath as a signal that someone, someone is coming and we only have two weeks more to get ready. But ready for who? Who is coming? Our first item of business this Advent season is to answer the question posed by one of our favorite hymns. What child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleep? What child is this who is coming? What does this mean for us? How will we accept him? Does he get confused with someone else's coming? Because I would imagine if we ask our children who is coming, they might answer with another song that is sung often during this Advent season. You better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout, I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. That's a song that they would sing. And that is what they are ready for. But during the next two Sundays of Advent, we will answer this question, what child is this? Who is coming into our midst at Christmas time? Our gospel lesson tells us of this child. It tells us that he is a judge. He will de decide something about our fate. It's sort of funny that the first couple of weeks of the new church here as a text that looks at the end instead of the beginning. Our gospel text deals with the end of time, the time of God's final judgment upon the earth. But I personally think it's very appropriate for us to begin here. Because as we learn about this child and his message for us, we will be more ready, more ready to accept this message and live in this message if we know the promise of the second coming. We traditionally speak about this text as the second coming of Christ, but I wonder if that's really correct terminology. Does this mean that Christ has not fully come into our world, that we need a second coming? Reverend Bill Adams wrote in one of his sermons that we so often speak of the second coming of Christ. Frankly, I don't know where we got such terminology. The phrase second coming does not appear anywhere in the Bible. The Bible proclaims loudly and clearly that the Christ, the very word of God, was with God and is God and became flesh in the world, not once, not twice, but eternally. The inherent problem with a phrase like second coming is that it carries the implication of not here yet. But Jesus Christ is not stuck in traffic. The Redeemer of the world wasn't sent to us with the wrong zip code, delayed until the Postal Department gets their acts together. The Word of God is present in everything and everyone, everywhere, right now. Advent isn't a season where we hang out for a while until Christmas happens. Advent is a season where we learn once again to be an expectant people, a people who anticipate a people who read the signs, a people who look painstakingly for the invasion of Christmas everywhere. Great words. I think the pastor is right, that Christ is here and now, and in its final expression of Christ that comes at the end of time. And that finally is what Matthew is speaking about. There will be a judgment time, a time that those who believe will be forever with the Master. And that comes about as Christ lives in the world now, here in our brokenness and in our suffering. We don't know the time of that judgment. Some say that with all the terrorist activity that we see or the pandemic that's going around, we have experienced it now. With the so-called moral decline in our land, that the end is near, but is it? The 
The text says, no one knows when. You cannot look at the signs around you to know when, but be ready. What child is this? It is a child who comes now and is here now and will judge us when the final end of time comes upon us. What child is this? It is a child who the Bible has taught us to expect the end of the world. However, as an act of God beyond which lies the promise of God. The promise of God that is the key. In God's judgment, there is hope for the faithful. There is the promise of salvation through the Son of God, Jesus Christ. The parousia is not only the judgment of God upon the human race, but at the same time, the fulfilling of his promise of salvation. A new creation through his Son. There is joy as well as readiness, a watchfulness in this coming. What child is this? This child is one who will bring a judgment to the human race, as well as the hope and the promise of eternal salvation for those who are waiting and believing. Maybe the following will help us understand that in this judgment comes the promise of hope and salvation. David Peterson, another pastor, told about a time when he was preparing his sermon. His little daughter came in and said, Daddy, can we play? He answered, I'm awfully sorry, sweetheart, but I'm right in the middle of preparing this sermon. In about an hour I can play. And she said, okay, when you're finished, Dad, I'm going to give you a, a great big hug. And he said, thank you very much. She went to the door and these are his words. Then she did a U-turn and came back and gave him a chiropractic bone-breaking hug. And David said to her, darling, you said you were going to give me a hug after I finished. And she answered, daddy, I just wanted you to know what you have to look forward to. One meaning of Advent and Christmas is that God wants us to know through the first coming how much we have to look forward to in the great final fulfillment at the end of time. What child is this? He is the child who comes now to bring us hope and salvation. And he will continue to come into this world until the final days when he will bring all creation under his domain and control. We, we must in his promise of salvation for our time and for the future. We must trust and believe in that promise as we live in these in-between times. The times between his coming at Christmas and the time of the final judgment. Trust and believe in this child. What child is this? This is the child that will help us believe and trust in his saving grace in our lives. That kind of trust we need that in that child is demonstrated in the following. A young boy pulled his sled through an unfamiliar street late one winter afternoon delivering newspapers for his best friend. It had been snowing all day and sidewalks were not shoveled. Very few houses had outside lights on, so the unknown addresses were invisible. He had a list in his mittened hands, but after two hours it was soggy and unreadable. Only 10 papers left and he had no idea where they went. He stopped under a streetlight and looked up in, into its comforting glow and then looked down at his list. All the light showed was something that looked like an X, surrounded by blue ink stains. He sat down on the sled and he started to cry. Something wrong, son? asked an old man who happened by. After hearing the problem, the man looked at the list. That's an X, all right. It must be Paxton. And one of those papers must be mine. The boy handed him a paper apologizing. Why don't you give me the rest of them too, said the man. I can drop them off on my way home. 
The old man took the papers and disappeared around the corner. Now the boy wasn't sure if he should have trusted a stranger, but he was too relieved to worry about it. And the next day, his friend said no one had complained, so he knew his trust was well placed. But he still wasn't sure where Paxton Street was. And that's the point. We don't have to be sure. We only have to be sure only in Christ. It is Christ who makes the promises to us that the kingdom he began on Easter morning will come to its completion someday. When, we do not know. How, we do not know. We must trust, place our service in his hands. And we have, a visible, and we have visible signs and symbols of that trust when a baby is baptized. In the water and the words of the baptism, God through Christ comes to the child, cleanses them of their sins, brings them into God's kingdom. And then a process has begun in which they will have the rest of their life to learn, to love, and to worship this God that came to them now as a little baby. How? We don't know. Can we explain it? Not really. Do we trust and believe in it? By all means, because God through Christ declared it to be so. In baptism, we are made by God's action, kingdoms, people. In Acts, we respond. It has been that way all through the Bible. God acted at Christmas and continues to act through Easter and will continue to act in our lives through the last days. What child is this? This child is the Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, God with us. Wonderful counselor, God's child who acts upon our lives today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen.
please join me in professing what we believe by saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Father of all people, we thank you for bringing us together to worship today. It's important for all of us to be here. We don't know how much longer we have to worship inside the church till the COVID restrictions will force us again to stop worship, to start worshiping remotely again. As we prepare our hearts during the Advent season, we're full of hope. Lord, help us hear you say, you are our hope. Lord, your words say you are hope for the hopeless. So we're running to you with both arms outstretched. Fill us with hope and give us a tangible reminder today that hope is unbreakable spiritual lifeline. God, you know those things in our hearts that we dare to hope for. Today, we give them to you. Some of us may have individual hopes, but I think we all hope for an end to the virus and some sense of normalcy. It's as if we learned nothing from the quarantine in the spring because here we are, headed in the same place again. Lord, show us the greatness of your goodness that we should be grateful every day. Please bless us abundantly with rest for the heart, power for virtue, wisdom for life, and patience in suffering. Bless us with joyful hope. Almighty Lord God, give us true faith and make that faith grow in us each and every day. Also give us hope and love that we may serve our neighbors according to your will. Heavenly Father, we are your humble servants. We come before you today in the need of hope. There are times when we feel helpless. There are times when we feel weak. We pray for hope. We need hope for a better future. We need hope for a better life. We need hope for love and kindness. Some say that the sky is the darkest before the light. We pray that is true, for it all seems dark. We need your light, Lord, in every way. We pray to be filled with your light from head to toe, to based in your glory, to know that all is right in the world as you have planned and as you want it to be. Help us to walk in your light and live our lives in faith and glory. O oh, Father in heaven, look upon us and all your people who struggle with anger, anxiety, doubt, frustration, guilt, hopelessness, loss, memories, lack of patience, pain, regret, regret, sadness, selfishness, temptation, and weakness. Your holy word tells us all things work together for the good of those who love you, who are called according to your purpose. You make all these things work for your good purpose in our lives, even when we don't understand it. Gracious loving God, as we receive communion today, humble us and help us to remember that your son died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. Please give us thankful, forgiving, and pure hearts. Father, teach us to offer you a heart of thanksgiving and praise in all our daily experiences of life. God of all people, help us not be complacent. Help us to stay vigilant about wearing our masks, keeping our distance, and washing our hands. Let us for not not forget all the healthcare workers and the effects the virus has had on them, always surrounded by illness, oftentimes death, having to tell families they can't see their loved ones. They don't walk away from work every day unscathed. They suffer from depression and PTSD. In some cities, it's like working in a war zone. Father, give them the strength they need to handle what is before them. Bless all the other frontline employees as well, who put their lives on the line every day caring for those with the virus and bless their families as their lives are far from normal. Thanksgiving was hard for many of us who didn't travel. As Christmas approaches, please help us show the same restraint. It is a perfect time to reflect on the true meaning of Christmas. It's not about Santa Claus, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, or about being home alone. It's about when Jesus was born. He came into this world with a plan for our redemption. It's very easy to let this slip our minds as we carry on with the hustle and bustle of the holiday season. Gracious loving God, we ask for an awful lot from you. 
When we get what we want, it's at your direction. When we don't get what we want, that's you protecting us. Heavenly Father, lead all nations of the world in the way of justice and goodwill. Direct those who govern us to rule fairly, keep order, be inclusive, and uphold peace so the world may claim your rule and know true security. As the sun rises with each new day, we must wake up, keep going, stay strong, and keep our faith in you. Father, hear our prayers and fill our hearts and our mouths with praise for you, for your good gifts, our family and our friends, the ability to love and be loved, and for generous hearts. Father of all people, may your love be the passion in our hearts, your joy be our strength when times are hard, and your presence be our peace that overflows. We feel your love and compassion, and for this we are eternally grateful. Amen. give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for the righteous, for they will be filled. Our Savior invites those who trust in him to share the feast that he has prepared. Let us pray. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, whom you sent to save us. He came with healing in his touch and was wounded for our sins. He came with mercy in his voice and was mocked as one despised. He came with peace in his heart and met with violence and death. By your power he broke free from the prison of the tomb, and at his command the gates of hell were opened. The one who was dead now lives. The one who humbled himself is raised to rule over all creation, the Lamb upon the throne. The one ascended on high is with us always as he promised. Nourished at this table, O God, may we know Christ's redemptive love and live a new life in him. Help us who recognize our Lord in the breaking of the bread to see and serve him in all whose lives are broken. Give us who are fed at his hand grace to share our bread with the hungry and with the hungry of heart. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes in final victory, and we shall feast with all the saints in the joy of your eternal realm. Through Christ, all glory and honor are yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, he took bread, and after he broke it, he blessed it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. And every time you eat of this bread or drink of this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes again. Let us all be fed.
as you leave this place, as you leave your, your computers at the end of this service. Be ready. Be ready for the coming of Christ. Be patient during this Advent season. The Christ child will be born. We know that. But we need to enjoy the journey on what it means to be an expectant people. And as you leave, may the shalom of God, the love and passion of Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with us all.